welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Cavalier and Sunfire. One of my fans suggested I do a video on the Sunfire. That was a great idea. I wish I would have thought of it myself. I have thousands of stories about Cavaliers and Sunfires. I worked at a speed shop at the height of the tuner movement. They were both extremely popular. One of the shops I worked for at the time actually developed exclusive Coney strut inserts. As a young store manager, I made many questionable decisions, including hiring my friends. My friend slash employee, Paul, had fast and furious fever. Unlike most of our nitrous-hungry customers, Paul wanted to turbocharge his Sunfire. Luckily for him, he had a co-op at a shop that had a laser cutter. He was able to laser cut the exhaust flange and build an impressive turbo manifold for the Sunfire. We were all pretty broke at the time, so I donated a Thunderbird Turbo Coupe Turbo that I had laying around for the cause. In my ridiculous oversimplification of how to properly size a turbo, I assumed if a turbo worked on a 2.3 liter Ford, it should work on a 2.4 liter Pontiac. The thing I failed to realize was the 2.3 liter Ford was an 8 valve and the 2.4 liter Pontiac was a 16 valve, which resulted in the tiny Turbo Coupe IHI Turbo, which I thought was a T3, reaching full boost at 2500 RPM. The 2.4 then detonated all the way to redline. Computer tuning for the pores was not really a thing in the 90s, so the Sunfire had to suffice with an MSD booster pump and a Powerdyne 8 to 1 rising rate FMU. My other Sunfire Cavalier entanglement was when I dismantled cars at a late model auto wrecking yard. That's another story. <laughs> Fast forward to 2022 and the Sunfire slash Cavalier are extremely affordable, and they're definitely worth a second look. Introduction. The Cavalier was a compact car built by Chevrolet, which replaced the Chevy Monza. The Cavalier was Chevrolet's second attempt at a front-wheel drive car, the Citation being the first. The North American Cavalier had three generations spanning from 1982 to 2005. The Cavalier was one of the first General Motors world cars. In other worlds, the J-Body platform was the base of the Opel Ascona, the Australian Holden Camira, the Brazilian Chevrolet Monza, and the Japanese Azuzu Asuka. GM North American divisions, save for GMC, also got their own J-bodies. Cadillac had the Cimarron. Buick had the Skyhawk. Oldsmobile had the Forenza. And Pontiac had the 1982 J2000, 1983-2000, 1984-2000 Sunbird, 1985-94 Sunbird, and the 95-05 Sunfire. The Cavalier was replaced by the Chevy Cobalt in 2005. The Sunfire was a compact car built by GM's Pontiac division to replace the Sunbird. The Sunfire was replaced by the G5 in 2006 in Canada and 2007 in the United States. This story is going to focus on the third generation of the Cavalier and the Pontiac Sunfire. Cavalier. The 1995 Cavalier was a clean sheet of paper design. It was larger and more aerodynamic, sharing a few styling cues from its big sister, the Chevrolet Camaro. The coupe, convertible, and sedan were back. However, the wagon model was sadly discontinued. The 1997 Cavalier was the best-selling car in the entire GM lineup. Engines were all in line fours. There was no longer a V6 option, but nobody cared because the new four-cylinder engines had similar horsepower. RS and base models retained the 2.2-liter bushrod four-banger from the previous models which was made a 2A 3-speed Auto Tragic or a 5-speed manual in the two-door models. 1996 brought a new 4-speed automatic transmission available in any trim. It was intended to be introduced with the redesign, but General Motors was running short on cash, which delayed it. The LS Convertible and the Z24 got the 2.3-liter LD2 quad-4 engine in 1995, but received the new 2.4-liter dual overhead cam LD9 in 1996. The LD9 could also be sneakily special ordered by eagle-eyed dads on the four-door LS model, creating a perfect sleeper. This engine produced a 150 horsepower and 155 foot-pounds of torque and was used until 2002. The 2000 model year was facelifted. The Chevrolet badge on the trunk lid was shaved, and in its place was a new Cavalier badge along with snazzy five-spoke cub caps. The 2.4-liter engine came standard with a Getrag F23 5-speed manual transmission on the Z24. A 4-speed auto tragic was optional on the Z24 and standard on the LS. The Z24 only came as a 2-door model until 2002. It featured 16-inch tires, aluminum wheels, sport-tuned suspension, a body kit, 
and a more aggressive rear spoiler. In 2002, a four-door Z24 sedan became available, featuring the same driveline as the coupe with more doors. The Z24 also got a thicker front sway bar and a better handling FE2 sport suspension and a less invasive ABS braking system. In 2002, the Poverty Spec 3-speed auto tragic transmission was discontinued on the 2.2 liter base model. The LS Sportline replaced the RS. The LS featured the new Ecotec L61 engine with 140 horsepower and 150 foot-pounds of torque. These engines improved fuel economy, featuring the same displacement as the old faithful 122 pushrod engine, 2.2 liter overhead valve, while having nearly as much power as the older LD9 engines. For 2003, the Ecotec was the sole engine option. To soften the blow, an Eaton M45 supercharger kit was offered for the Z24. The supercharger kit was developed, tested, and marketed by GM and could only be bought and installed at a General Motors dealer. The blower added 40 horsepower and 40 foot-pounds of torque, boosting the Z24's rookie numbers from 140 horsepower and 150 foot-pounds of torque to an impressive 190 horsepower and 195 foot-pounds of torque. Hurry styles. The third gen had two restyles, a minor one in 2000, with new bumpers, headlamps, and tail lamps, there was a more extensive restyle for 2003, which included a new front end design, revised tail lamps, and a full width rear reflector, a new rear bumper, and rear spoiler. Toyota Cavalier. To avoid additional restrictions on exports to the US, the Cavalier was sold to Japan by Toyota under license from GM, rebadged as a Toyota Cavalier. The Toyota Cavalier was right hand drive. It also featured a leather wrapped steering wheel, shift knob, and park brake lever. Wider front fenders. Amber turn signals were added to meet Japanese regulations. Other exterior additions included power folding side mirrors and turn signal repeaters on the fenders. The interiors differ with flex of color on the seats and a rear seat fold down armrest. Automatic transmission cars produced between February 1997 and December 1998 were available with leather interior. All Toyota Cavaliers came with Sunfire rims. The Toyota Cavalier came in 2.4G and 2.4Z trim levels. TRD, Toyota Racing Development, made a JDM as body kit and rear wing for the Cavalier. As with most things cool in the car world, the kit was a Japan exclusive. The car itself was only sold at Toyota store Japanese dealerships. The Toyota Cavalier was not made in Japan, however. All 1995 to 2000 Cavaliers were produced by GM in the U.S. at the Lordstown Assembly Plant. The 1995 used the 2.3 liter Quad 4. The 1996-2000 Toyota Cavaliers used the 2.4-liter LD9 engine. The engine displacement and exterior dimensions exceeded Japanese government regulations for a compact, so it was sold as a normal class car. A popular normal class car of the time for comparison was the Nissan Skyline. Prices for the coupe started at 2 million yen for the coupe, roughly 13,682.1997 US dollars, and 1.81 million yen for the sedan. Roughly 12,838, 1997 US dollars. The final Toyota Cavalier was exported to Japan in June 2000. Sunfire. The Pontiac Sunfire was a compact car built by Pontiac. It was introduced for the 1995 model year to replace the Sunbird. Like its sister car, the Cavalier, the 95 was a clean sheet design. Much like the Cavalier's styling was similar to the Camaro, the Sunfire styling was similar to the Firebird. The Sunfire was available as a stand, coupe, or convertible. All three came in the standard SE trim. The high-performance variant was called the Sunfire GT. The GT came in both coupe and convertible. The GT came standard with the 2.3-liter LD2 engine in 1995 and the 2.4-liter LD9 twin-cam engine from 1996 to 2002. Other GT performance enhancing additions included high performance tires mounted on 16 inch aluminum wheels, dual exhaust, and a more aggressive looking front bumper. The SE trim level came with the 2.2 liter 2200 overhead valve engine. The 2.3 slash 2.4 dual overhead cam engine was optional, creating a Pontiac sleeper. Both the 2.4 liter twin cam and the Ecotec were available for 2002 GTs. The convertible was sadly discontinued after the 2000 model year. In 2003, the SE and the GT models were dropped and the sole engine option was the 2.2 liter Ecotec Cavalier and Sunfire engines. Stock performance. Racing. 
J-Body twins are often drag raced. Wow, that Cavalier took that vet to Gapplebee's. The J-Body twins make great circle track cars. Gen J body. I called a friend on this one. According to the internet, the entire car is a problem area and every part of the car is a big problem. That is not how I remember it. Many of my friends had them and they were reliable cars. I spoke to my friend James, Berkeley's Garage on YouTube, who still owns two Cavaliers and one Sunfire for his two cents. According to James, the problem areas are the front subframe rusting out. This is a really common problem. The AC drips on the back of it and it just rots away. Finding a rest-free one on eBay is easy enough, though. Installing it is pretty straightforward, too. Mechanical. LD9 2.4s were very bad for a cylinder 3 rod bearing, eating itself. Uh, listen for a rod knock carefully, and check the dipstick for signs of bearing material. According to James, the Ecotex can skip timing, but do so very rarely. Electrical. James claims they have the worst wiring GM's ever produced. He said it's more annoying than anything serious. His buddy's car used to turn on the wipers when you signaled left or the dome light would turn on when you play with the HVAC knobs. Value. James and I discuss value, and we agree that Edmunds 873 to 1,455 US dollars for 1995, and 2,708 to 4,440 US dollars for 2005 were pretty low ball. I browsed around, and you get a really nice rust-free Cavalier Sunfire with low miles between 3,500 and 5,500 Canadian dollars. James agreed that with COVID pricing, expect to pay $3,500 for a decent one. The ones I saw for way under $3,500 look like end-of-life cars to me. If it is badly rusted and the paint is trashed, is it even worth buying? Have you priced a body and paint shop recently? We also talked about how cheaply you can score a car that needs a new engine. James recently picked up a clean Sunfire for $600. If you're mechanically inclined, this might be a way to buy one cheaply, as replacing the engine in a J-body is about as easy as it gets. As far as future collectability goes, I can't see them setting the world on fire. Garage kept low mileage convertibles seem to be the only ones going for serious coin. I don't think this should discourage you though. The Cavalier slash Sunfire is a great enthusiast car for not a lot of money. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars and my story of the Cavalier and Sunfire. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Uh -huh.